Hey, it's Ace, aka Ace of Kings, aka Drakerson, or that guy. Today I'm going to explain how to use the Aegis of Cover or the shield during the Aethon fight. You have four ways to attack, first being the R1 button or right bumper for Xbox users. It's a standard swing with decent damage, can stagger some enemies, and be used to cover ground quite quickly. When in the air, use this instead of a slam to better control your descent and make sure you don't land off a cliff. The second is a slam attack which can be done with R2 or right trigger for Xbox users. It causes massive amounts of damage and always staggers enemies even with X Minotaurs and can one shot most smaller enemies like goblins and hobgoblins. It also one shots oracles so that's a good thing to note. Uh, the third is a shield bash attack, which can be used by pressing R2 or right trigger for Xbox users while on the ground. It staggers most enemies and also one shots any smaller enemies, like Vex goblins and hobgoblins. Then the last attack is your super, which fires an orb of light at your target. The projectile is not very fast, so make sure you're going to hit what you're aiming for. The attack is used to down the Templar shield, or it can be used to destroy oracles during the Atheon fight when you're in portals. It's one shot for oracles, so you could still help, even if you're the one that picked up the shield. You can still destroy them and help out your teammates, dispatch them quicker, and get uh, time vengeance activated faster. Uh, the attack can also be used to damage Atheon and the Templar, but it's almost pointless to do so. You're better off just doing like this and shielding your teammates. Uh, as far as defensive capabilities, you have the Cleanse Shield, which can be activated using L1 or left bumper for the Xbox users. And what this is used for is to cleanse marks of negation and oracle markings, and it's also a, a giant shield. It works the same as the Titan's Ward of Dawn in the sense that enemies can't shoot through it, but your teammates can shoot from inside of it to anything outside of it, so... Uh, they can definitely take advantage of that if you're using the center platform method. Um, now let's get to the uses of the shield during the Templar fight. Uh, the shield spawns in bottom center in the circle. Your job as Aegis Holder will be to grab the shield and move away from the Templar where your teammates are paying careful attention to enemy spawns. When an oracle spawns and is not killed before it disappears, your teammates will be marked for negation. When this happens, you need to have your teammates gather in a group and cleanse them using L1 or left bumper for Xbox users. The Templar will be in the center and will teleport randomly after each burn phase. The burn phase is when your teammates deal damage to the Templar after you've dropped its shield using the Aegis Super ability. It's always a random pattern, but there is a pattern to his teleports. Like, the teleports itself aren't random, but the pattern in which he does them is. So, it's a different pattern each time, but yes, there is a pattern. So, bearing that in mind, uh, what you'll need to do whenever you're fighting the Templar is grab the, whoever the shield bearer is, grab the shield, uh, make sure your teammates are taking care of oracles, uh, get your super up, activate super on the Templar, drop a shield, and just burn him, and repeat that process until he is dead. On a side note, uh, on normal he'll only summon one oracle, but on hard he summons two. So if you choose to block his teleports using the Aegis shield, or a Titan's Ward of Dawn, there will be Minotaurs also that you have to deal with, so sometimes it's not even worth uh, stopping his teleports just because t your teammates could very easily be overwhelmed. So, moving on to the second encounter with the shield is during the Gatekeeper phase. When this starts, after you enter through the door, you must kill the Gatekeeper to activate the gates that lead to the shield. After the gatekeeper is dead, you must then enter each gate and retrieve the Aegis from inside. And after you enter the gate, you will need to deal with mobs and another gatekeeper. I recommend bringing like an icebreaker or a galahorn for this. 
The only one to go after also is the gatekeeper. You can completely ignore the mobs if you can take the damage. So once the gatekeeper's dead, you can grab the shield and leave, but you need to be quick if you decide to pass up the mobs. After this is done twice, and you have both shields, move to the center and defend the conflux. Both shield bearers will watch each gate on the left and right sides until the Praetorians have come out. Do this for about 80 seconds, or a minute and 20, and you will be moved on to the Atheon fight. Um, for the Atheon fight, the shield has two functions. Uh, the first is dispatching mobs after Atheon teleports three of you inside the gates, and the second is shielding your teammates from Atheon's attacks after Time's Vengeance is in effect. What you'll do is whenever the fight starts, you will be teleported randomly to Mars or Venus. The difference in telling where you are is Mars is a rocky desert looking area, and Venus is green with algae and plants and jungle stuff shit. From the perspective of the door, Mars is left and Venus is right. Your teammates will be able to tell if you're on Mars or Venus because it will show you in the other two with you in the bottom left or top right corner of the map. So bottom left would be um, Mars and top right would be Venus when you're facing Atheon. Uh, what you'll do inside the portal on Mars if your shield bearers grab the shield and go right down the second set of stairs behind the wall. Once you're at the bottom, use R2 or right trigger to shield bash each hobgoblin and cleanse your teammates afterward. Uh, to get rid of the hobgoblins quickly, just continually shield bash them, and uh, the shield actually has a very uh, long reach as far as the shield bash goes, so you should be able to just like jump from one right to the other. They shouldn't even have a chance to hit you, but if they manage to, just be careful and just try to dispatch them as quickly as possible so that you don't die. Uh, once that is done and you've killed the hobgoblins, cleanse your teammates using uh, L1 or left bumper for Xbox users and dispatch the oracles. And then what you're going to do is exit the portal and you'll go you will turn left as soon as you exit the portal on Mars onto the middle platform to begin the burn phase. Venus is essentially the same practice except instead of top goblins, you will have uh, two goblins and a Praetorian. Go towards the steps and jump straight upward using your booster jump and try to aim your slam attack which is used by pressing R2 or right trigger while in the air at the Praetorian below. Once that is done, just shield bash using R2 or right trigger on the ground to dispatch the remainder of the Praetorian's health and dispatch the goblins. If possible, try to get all three in the impact zone so that you kill the goblins and only have the Praetorian to deal with, because the Praetorian's actually a lot easier to deal with than the goblins. Because I've seen so many people get rid of the Praetorian, but they've been killed by the goblins, and then it's a wipe. Because nobody picked up the fucking shield. After this is done, cleanse your teammates and clear the oracles. Once this is done, exit the portal. You will turn right after you exit the portal if you're on Venus and onto the center platform to begin the burn phase. Repeat these processes and Atheon should go down, assuming you have adequate DPS within, say, two or three teleports. And there you have it. That is how to use the shield or the Aegis Recover and utilize all of its abilities with ease. I hope this helped you, and I hope this uh, teaches you how to use the shield so that next time someone asks you if you know how to use the shield, just say, yeah, I watched that video Ace put up. It was fucking legit. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button, hit that sub button, comment, love to hear your thoughts, and uh, I'll be doing a, another tutorial video on the sword as well. So stay tuned for that, and I'll be showing you how to use the sword of Proto.